Well, it's, it's funny. You're usually uh, fighting abroad, you know. I think three <laughs> out of your last four was all over the world. But now you're, I, I think, about, what, three hours away from home? Two or three hours? Yeah. yeah. How's that process? Feels good, you know. I don't have the long journey. Um, being able to fight stateside, I feel elated, you know, being that three of my last four have been outside the U.S. What, and I, I know some fighters say it's a, at times could be a bad thing because they're, they're getting hit up from yeah. all their friends, their family. Have you been getting a lot of calls and requests from people you haven't heard from in a while? I do, I do. And I kind of, it's funny because I heard a, from people early on and I kind of told people, hey, um, this is how it's going to be. If you need tickets, if I if I said I get you a ticket, then you have to contact this person. So I kind of take it out of my hand. Um, my friends take on the task of you know being the guy that gets called. I get them, I give them a list of the people who get tickets, and they call them. Everybody else, you contact me via text. You contact me via Facebook, Instagram. I'm not going to answer. You know, I'm <laughs> focused on the fight. And after this, you know, I'll be like, hey, I didn't check my messages, so now I can reply. That's smart. When when did you uh, set up that little process? It, it sounds like you you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably. The, the last year, you know, yeah. especially when the fights become bigger, everybody need tickets, but you know, most people don't need tickets when it's Australia or, you know, Brazil or New Zealand, but yeah, definitely when it's in the U.S., everybody hit me up for tickets, so I have to kind of draw that line somewhere. Well, speaking of uh, big events, it's your uh, third headline event, I believe, overall, and your second headline event in a row. What does that say about the UFC's belief in you and I guess maybe your, your star power now? Hey, when you need a good fight, you go find Mr. Brunson, you know? So I'm a guy that go out here and put on a show, finish fights, and fan-friendly, you know? Different from coming, when I first came into UFC, I came in as a, a pure grappler, you know, still working on my skills, but now I'm pretty comfortable with my stand-up. What do you think, finally, do you feel like when, at the start of your career to now, that you maybe got as much support behind you from the promotion and from, you know, maybe the media, or what was it that finally gave you think maybe put that switch i made them you know i went out here and, and put my knuckles on people so they had no choice so um i like to think i did it the hard way you know they it wasn't from the beginning i mean i was producing all throughout man i had a g great record i believe nine and three in the ufc so you know i'm consistent i'm winning fights you know always winning and I've seen some guys that, you know, might be six and five in the UFC, and they've been in a lot of big fights, getting a big push, but I came out here and did it the hard way. You know, I made guys pay attention. You know, when you go out here and finish fights, you have to pay attention. You just can't ignore a guy for so long. Do you respect it more that you, you feel that you've, you've earned it maybe more so than some of these cats that maybe just maybe get given it a little bit easier? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I definitely respect it. Even, you know, the money, I make decent money, but it, it wasn't given to me, you know. I didn't. I didn't come into UFC on a on a great pay scale, opposed to some of the other guys that other guys complain about. I came in here and I fought. You know, I won fights, been consistent, and you know, let that speak for itself. Yeah, we've well, been on a heck of a run lately, uh, culminating in that impressive performance of the night finish of Leon Machida. Um, what did you take away from that fight that maybe helped push you into this camp and going forward? Was it? just your overall performance? Was it overall just how you dealt with the fight week? I mean, what, what did you take away from that fight that you've been using to propel you forward? Oh, just patience. Just going out here understanding that, hey, um, even if someone catch you with a jab or, you know, a clean cross, that you don't have to go in there and engage in a full-blown battle. You know, you can kind of step back and set up your punches and then still get the finish. Do you think that's often you know, a, a tough thing to do because I think a lot of these guys want to go out there and they want that impressive finish and they push too hard for it. Was it a matter of maybe a little trial and error that you found the sweet spot for you to, to, to figure out when you needed to, to explode and when to possibly just hold back and let the fight come to you? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I was, I was having a, a great run. I think I was doing it for, for the history books. You know, I think, uh, what was it, five first round finishes or four in a, in a row? I believe five would have been the record in the UFC, like of, of all time. So um, I went out there in a fight and really tried to force it, you know, so that was kind of learning the hard way. Then I kind of like, okay, I know I can knock guys out, but let's do it in a more, you know, constructive way where we're not putting ourselves in a lot, of, at a, a lot of danger and we're still able to get the finish. And once you, I guess that sounds, sounds like one of those moments where it kind of just changes the whole way you approach the fight because you found yourself catching yourself putting undue pressure on yourself because you were going for a record or you were going for a thing. <coughs> Was that a big learning experience and maybe a little weight off your shoulder going forward to realize that, hey, I don't need to chase these records. I don't need to chase these things. I just need to 
go out there, put on good performances, and get that win? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, being with that being said, whenever I was chasing, you know, trying to get the most finishes in the first round for you know the history books, <coughs> I also knew that, you know, I still didn't like. I wanted it and I was gunning for it, but it was, you know, I felt I can get the job done, but then it let me know that, hey, you gotta be more a part of the process and kind of take your time, pick your, pick your shots, and really don't go out there. It's funny, because I have a gym now, and I I tell the younger guys, they'll come in and try to spar, and then they'll be like, oh, oh, all right, I'm done. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm like, don't try to spend your energy all in one spot, and then, you know, so it's like a note to myself, like, hey, don't try to spend your energy all in one spot, you know, just kind of, you know, set it up and you know the finish will come i was gonna say being a, a gym owner and maybe taking more of a more mentorship role how has that improved your game i mean is it really kind of helped your to be able to analyze better and 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 step back and look and see what you've been doing this whole time yeah uh for sure um when you're actually teaching someone something you definitely have to analyze it and make it play over and over in your head and sometimes you're like hold, hold on did i make did i forget a step did i you know explain it quite correct so when you're doing that when you're processing it's making it better for you so you can understand it also so it definitely made me more of a thinker and um, picking up on things now I know you weren't initially asking for Jacare but I know you were asking for tough guys so you get the call from the UFC from the UFC offering Jacare what were your initial thoughts um I was like cool you know it's an opportunity to um, fight a top level guy to get some Revenge, even though I don't really look at this fight as revenge. I mean, it happened, but you know, I was very green when I fought um, Jacare. I think he knows that also. So I'm a whole different fighter. But um, yeah, um, initially I wanted a guy who really was going to be like, okay, Derek beat him. He deserves a title shot. You know, um, that, that'll be three in a row. You know, the finishes are great. You know, all these first round finishes. Um, the, the Anderson, let's just say we don't count the Anderson Silver fight, or let's say we kind of like, you know, that potentially four in a row, eight out of nine, you know, that, that that's a huge streak. So that's the type that I was looking for. Well, and, and you kind of touched upon it there, and that was going to be one of my next questions, but you sort of already answered it. You know, everybody's selling it as this is the rematch, you know, but that was August 18, 2012. Yeah, you guys yeah. like, How are you now compared to what you were then, and how is he different? I mean, because like you said, I think – but that much time, you're you're a totally different fighter. It doesn't seem like a rematch to you, does it? Nah, not at all. Um, Jacare's the same fighter since um, I've known him, or since I watched him fight. And you know, it's been about six years, you know, which is not a bad thing. But I, I know what he's going to do. You know, he's very um, he comes forward with the punches, and he's going to look for the takedown. Um, sometimes he'll throw three, four, five punches, you know, but he's ultimately going to look for the takedown. So I know what he's bringing to the table, and I know how he's going to approach the fight, but uh, he has no idea how I'm going to approach the fight. Like, I got knees, elbows, kicks now. Um, keep him guessing. You know, I can take him down too. I'm not afraid to take him down and get in his guard and punch on him. So um, just confident wherever the fight goes. So you kind of answered my question because I was going to ask where you thought he was the most dangerous. So in your eyes, he hasn't evolved as much as you have so you're expecting the same thing he's gonna either try to use some punches to set up to get to the ground game i think most people uh, expect that he's going for the, some sort of jiu-jitsu submission of mm -hmm. some some sort um so do you feel that he really just hasn't evolved since then it ultimately is the same same person i mean i know he's getting older as well so is he maybe less dangerous than what you think that he used to be not that he's not so much that he hasn't evolved because i'm sure he picked up on you know a little key points here and there or like fine tune some things but I think he's the exact same fighter like he's peaked out he was already he, he's been what he's been for the past couple of years you know um, probably getting a little wiser and you know understanding the game more but yeah um, definitely showcasing the same skill sets that he had for years so your win over a legend like Machida who was I believe at the time the UFC reigned him at 13th and if you win Saturday against Jockery, which I believe the UFC has him as th number three, which would be a, a bigger win for you? And is it maybe a bigger win this one because it more than likely sets up a title contention or some or gets you closer? Where do you see which fight as being a bigger win for your career? That's a, that's a valid question. Um, I guess you will have to go with the higher ranked guy that's going to do more for me at the at this current time. Um, Leota was out for a while, but funny enough, everybody forget the fact that skills don't really diminish. You know, um, 
he was out for a while. He had a close fight with Romero up until Romero was able to get the finish. Uh, right before that, he beat uh, Gegard Musasi, who beat Chris Wyman, who was fourth in the rankings right before he left. So, I mean, this guy missed, missed some time due to whatever, the, the supplement thing. But um, his resume is stout. He's beat a lot of top guys. But um, I guess you have to go with the one that's going to propel me to to you know lower in the rankings to where I want to be. So yeah, this would be the the best win for sure. Now I know there's some questions with the whole uh, division because we're not quite sure how long uh, uh, Whitaker is going to be out. You know, we got this interim belt that's going to happen. But do you feel with a good win here that that should get you if there isn't a unification bout that happening that this should get you the next shot at possibly the interim belt? I think so. I think so. Uh, um, I hope Whitaker is healthy and he comes back and you know he's able to whatever kick whatever injury or whatever and he's able to fight soon. But with that being said, he might not be able to. Like if he, I heard he has something with his the staff infection that traveled to his lungs and it's pretty serious. So that might sideline him for a while, you know. So with that being said, they have guys fighting for the interim. So yeah, you know, a win over number three. I think I'll jump a lot of guys and be in that three spot with an impressive finish. Um, yeah, I, I should be up next for the interim title for sure. And if they didn't say that uh, possibly Robert's coming back and they're they're trying to hold the interim, would the uh, about with the loser be something possibly? I know that could be a possible rematch with Romero, I mean, or but would that be something that you would be interested, in, or would you rather hold out and say I'm? I'm holding out for that next title shot. I think so. I think that'll be more on my edge, you know, because you don't really, you know, with this game, this game is crazy. You never know when you're going to get a title shot or, or what. So, you know, I think a, a win over a number three guy, I think I can wait, you know. Um, I'm not hurting financially, so smart my money. So um, I can wait for that next title shot, being that the fights that I've had, the streaks that I can tell, you know, the finishes that I've that I've getting, you know, I don't think it's very hard to market a guy that's getting first round knockouts, you know. So, I think it's a fight that uh, everybody want to see, regardless of who it's against. So, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll be waiting for for something big after this for sure. Okay, so I know you've thought about the fight. Saturday comes when you see it play out in your head. How do you get the fight done on Saturday? I think I go out there, you know, take my time, see how uh, Jacare comes out. You know, he can come out super aggressive. And I'll be right there to meet him with some punches or, you know, he can come out super, you know, patient and then I'll still be there to meet him with punches. But ultimately just put my hands on him and taking him out.